Today we will be covering Lesson 1-1 in our Algebra 1 curriculum. It's Numeric and Graphic Representations of Data. We're going to start off and in Algebra 1 we are going to be using our Springboard curriculum and it requires us to chunk our lessons. So we'll do a couple of problems, talk about them, do a few more problems, talk about them, and keep going on in a, such a way. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to chunk the first part of our lesson. And that chunk is going to cover questions 1 to 3. 1 to 3. I want you to take a moment with your classmates at your table. And I want you to talk about questions 1, 2, and 3. What we're going to do is we're going to pause the video here. I'm going to give you a five-minute time limit. And I want you and your table mates to try to see if y'all can come to some type of consensus for questions 1, 2, and 3. And then we'll come back together and talk about this set of questions. So again, pause your videos. Five minutes. I have now provided the answers for questions 1, 2, and 3. The first thing you would have done in question 1 is you and your table mates should have described the patterns that you saw in the table. You could say something along the lines of the length of eruption in minutes increased by 1 each time, the approximate time until the next eruption increased, 12 minutes for every one minute increase in the length of the eruption. Number two, I highlighted things like crowd control, safety. Maybe you just want to give a schedule to people who are trying to come in to see this, to view this eruption of the Old Faithful Geyser. And in number three, this is the one I really want to focus on here. It says, if an eruption lasts eight minutes, about how long must park visitors wait to see the next eruption? It not only asks you to determine how long you thought it was going to be, but it also asks you to explain how you got to that point. Now, I came up with 130 minutes. There were a couple of ways you could have done this, but what I did was I extended the table. If I would have continued the same pattern, it would have gone 5, 94, 6, 106, 7, 118, 8, 130. So I put 130 minutes. Again, I just continued the same pattern of this addition of 12 each time, which is what you should have identified in part one. Now, on the next slide, you're going to have a debriefing question. Sometimes your debriefing question, you'll be able to see your other table mates answers or the rest of the class's answers. And this particular one that you're going to see on the next slide is a short response based on you alone. So you're going to answer the question to the best of your ability on material that was covered in this first section. Sometimes I might call out a specific question for you to answer. Sometimes I might ask you to explain how you got to that answer. So on the next slide, go ahead and answer the short answer question on the question that's on the screen. Good luck. 